Welcome to LCS Academy for Monday, where we've got three games cooking for you ahead of Monday Night League. I am Rivington Biz in the third. Excited to kick off your week of action with Sam Kobe Hartman Kensler. It is Monday. We still have league. This is a great spring split. And I just hope that all of you are having as good a day as I am. Look at this guy. He's just shining. This aura <laughs> right now. Let's get into game with that aura. Well, let's start things off with a look at the Academy standings. Right now, we do have Dignitas topping the tables. Immortals, 100 Thieves right behind them. And you can see everybody in the two-pack of victories. FlyQuest, Golden Guardians, and Cloud9. And you start to see the teams that have had trouble picking up a few of the wins to start spring split off. Yep, namely CLG and Team Liquid. Yeah. Still with zero wins apiece. So we will see how the standings shift with our games today. Game one does have FlyQuest Academy opposite the juggernauts of the league and Dignitas with Golden Guardians Academy facing off against evil geniuses in game two. Then TSM Academy versus CLG before we hand things over to Monday Night League. Now, before we jump into game one, let's dive into the roster rundown. On the blue side, it is FlyQuest Academy. That means rolling around the top lane is Revenge. Jungle is Fnatic. Triple in mid, Mash at bot lane, and JJ at support right near him with Coach Cop. And facing them on the red side, it is Dignitas. In the top lane, Lorlo, Jungle Acadian, mid Demonte, bottom Phoenix, support Olay, and Coach Jim on stage. That it is, and Dignitas currently stack ranks as the final boss of Academy, as their recent wins have been nothing short of dominant. Yep, they have absolutely smashed the league, and it's to no surprise to most fans, right? <laughs> Everybody's used to seeing these players on this LCS stage yep. on LCS teams, so they've actually brought together a big powerhouse here. Uh, and look to have a fairly difficult time here with FlyQuest, though, because FlyQuest have also had a very strong early game in the lead. Uh, and we have looked at the early game gold difference mm -hmm. at 15 is just slightly above that of Team Dignitas. So I'm very hyped for this matchup to see if FlyQuest Academy can actually pull down mm -hmm. Dignitas uh, and give them a run for their money. Fnatic has been a really big player for getting things going on this FlyQuest Scott squad. So we'll see him going up against the Cadian here uh, in the Academy League. And that should be a great tussle in the jungle there. Fnatic on your screen. Getting stuff prepared. Hand warmers and prepped for the game. We are going to be getting into that one soon. And this is who can take a game right now off of Dignitas land. 3-0 and zero in the spring split for Academy. 2-1 and one is FlyQuest. They still sit at the top of the tables. And that's why, Kobe, you're saying it could be that game where they find that hole in Dignitas' armor. Plus, FlyQuest announced that they are going to be planting trees for all of the Academy wins and kills, as well as the LCS team. So, looking to plant some trees. I can't Throw wait. a new forest here for FlyQuest as well. Starting out with a Blitz Crank pick. Definitely could add some more exciting like level that. one possibilities here. Every time you see that in solo queue, you know everybody's pinging. Group up, stand in the bush. We can try to bend it. Or go fishing around for one of those hooks. I'm excited to see that's a lot of power on the bot side. Phoenix with the Senna and Ole with the Thresh. Academy runs the same as LCS nine weeks. The playoffs are different though. It's just those top six teams with the two having buys as we get to that point. We're looking at two of the teams that might be involved in that situation come that nine week mark. Yeah, and we're gonna have a little bit of a defensive move from Dignitas, see if there is any sort of late invade. They're all grouped up as four. Not gonna be the case, so let us get back down to the lanes. Currently on screen two, we're seeing mm -hmm. a world's caliber the matchup. Demonte and Triple played at this last year's Worlds. Yep. And Demonte did get the better of him in both the games when <laughs> Triple was on Mammoth. So maybe Triple here looking for some revenge in the 1v1 as well. He has the counter pick. Lissandra into LeBlanc is super common because Lissandra has point and click crowd control, which is very good at both. Uh, in lane, for, uh, trying to shove the wave and playing defensively, but also later into the game where it really matters, uh, you're able to stop LeBlanc when she goes for the very annoying harassment combination of yeah. distorting in, double Qs with chain. Uh, if you can land the Lissandra ult on her, uh, lock her down, you can burst her from 100 to zero. It's one of the, the few answers that teams can have to one of those later game LeBlancs where the mobility is your biggest problem. You have to be able to cast in the blink of an eye. You can basically do that on Lissandra if you see Demonte coming around the corner. Lorlo just trying to get level two here against Revenge. We have seen Orns kind of dominating that top lane. They just want, this yeah. should just go back and forth until their outer gets some jungle pressure. 
And you can see a nice trade right there from Triple Two. Uh, just get the W, proc the Aftershock as Demonte goes in for it. And a little bit worse for wear, but LeBlanc has to look for these offensive opportunities. Big part of her laning phase comes from pressuring and threatening to have your jungler come for those kills. So Demonte constantly autoing the wave, you can see, to try and push it in and gain some room on the map for him to work with. But Triple with another nice Q through the minion wave, which can explode on Demonte and make him start to chug through his corrupting potion. Demonte there on his fourth unique of the season had a 6-0-9 rumble game mm -hmm. previously. That was against Liquid in week two. And Liquid has been having trouble, but Demonte, he does not stop when he has yeah, he's part of the trouble. He was puck. causing him yeah. trouble. <laughs> Mid lane Acadian hovering a bit, waiting for Fnatic to come around since Demonte's had a pretty good push on this mid lane for quite some time. Ready for that counter, and he says, hello. Just a quick wave by, and he thinks Fnatic might be on that bot side of the map. Yep, Acadian, because their mid lane is pushed up like this, uh, gets to go for the invade. Uh, you can see him kind of work with Demonte off of that mid wave into the Raptors. It was a little bit too late. They see that Fnatic has already taken them. And Fnatic will then just go top side to get the top rip uh, Scuttler since he got vision of Acadian. And I think FlyQuest is actually pretty happy with the opening stages of this game. You mentioned already in the top lane, Riv, how well Orn has been doing. It's just, it's actually one of the very few tanks that people have been playing because Orn does have a very decent laning phase, but also scales insanely well. That brittle the damage. Extra items. Woo. I am it damage uh, and items and brittle. A lot of people are saying, yeah, double stack brittle if you can get that orn horn to come through along with his basics. That's my favorite part of the kit, is the orn horn. It's so good. <laughs> Probably one of my favorite ultimates. It shakes your entire screen. I feel like I more it. champions need battle cries when they use their ult or go into a, a team fight like that. When orn's coming in, everybody knows the fight is about to start. I think it's sick. Oh, Ooh, very boy. nice grab there onto Phoenix. He's not going to feel too good about that one as the cleave room damage keeps coming through. Mash has that out still, kind of saving the ammo in lane. He's still actually starting with the two initial guns. So he's been kind of babying those to go and then switch to grabbing some right there. Yeah, nice little thread there by JJ. Right past the minions, catch Phoenix a little bit off guard. Uh, Thresh, really nice answer with the Dark Passage, but uh, they do get a nice trade for themselves. Every little chunk of damage onto Senna um, definitely does matter. It's annoying because she has so much healing. <laughs> Uh, you know, the support being played as, an, as yeah. a marksman. You can see right there off the queue, you get yourself healing, then heal right back up. But um, if you can continually chunk her down like that, keep her a little bit more cautious, threaten some possible jungle pressure, that's where you get to actually look for big plays. Other than that, Senna Thresh is an insanely good 2v2. Keeps it safe. You see the lantern getting out, and then they can heal as you're talking about. Top side. Orlo isn't too afraid of what Revenge is going to do in lane. It just keeps pushing him back, harassing here and there. You can see the CS is pretty good for Lorlo. Just possibly waiting for Acadian to come around the backside here. But still not going to see Fnatic. He's down towards the bottom side. They don't really have vision on him just yet. It's been interesting for the junglers to not peek. Feels like the lanes have either been pushed, I guess, in their favor in Acadian's position. So he invaded in the jungle or it's always reset, so there isn't much of a time to gank just yet anyways. Yeah, and because of the lack of real jungle pressure, uh, one of the biggest important things that has occurred here is that usually Lissandra will have to blow this teleport really early on when landing um, against the LeBlanc, but Triple has been able to stay even CS with Demonte and hold on to the teleport, just walking back to lane after his first buy, which is very big. They can make a cross map play if Demonte does not get control of that minion wave in bottom. Yeah, a little bit of love down there with Summoner Spells. Akadian over the wall finds Fnatic, so he got a mono -a mono in the river as the 2v2 tussle on the bot lane goes down. Summoner Spells from Ole there, and just to heal from Mash is what we're seeing. Demonte did ignite in the mid lane, though, so he does want to grab pressure as Triple uses his ultimate, too. Yeah, that's, it kind of lends itself to what we were just talking about, where if you let Triple hold on to this teleport advantage, then you're going to put your side lane at risk. So Demonte goes very offensively when a fight starts on bottom, uses the Ignite, goes for the big burst, gets the ultimate out of Triple to make sure that it's not actually going to turn that bottom lane fight. And as a result, forces him back to base. Akadian can start up the Dragon, and it should be first objective for Team Dignitas. Mountain is next as you get a little movement speed there to the side of Dig. 
kind of reset to the lanes as the minions go back out on this cannon wave. Pretty low mana for MASH, but there's still a fight here with Gravitum to lock it down for Fnatic to come over the wall. JJ goes in with overdrive. Hong Hong. Yeah, actually, <laughs> we were looking for more battle cries. The Hong Hong on the uh, Blitzcrank skin <laughs> for this hot rod one. Perfect. I think that counts. It's a little different than Orn. Versus. Boop, boop. Coming through. Beep, beep. It's perfect. It definitely still strikes fear into the opponent. Yeah. <laughs> as, a, as a bottom laner, you're quite used to the W spam. So we're coming up on eight minutes now. And it does, it, uh, the way they're oh, playing New Kobe is we have another fight towards the top side. Orn Horn straight down. Gets the perpendicular ultimate out. And I don't know if this is going to be good for him. Has to flash. He does have a case here. Oh, safeguard into the Sonic Wave. He's going to have help there. Oh, Demonte over the wall to clean that one up with the janitorial duty. And you see that restraint from Lorlo. You could tell he was itching for it. He's like, I could flash on him and get this kill, but my teammates are going to use regular abilities. I'll let Demonte pick it up there on the roam from LeBlanc. Senna ult came through from Phoenix as well to make sure they get it. And Lorlo holds onto his flash because of it. So now it is a very big advantage for the Aatrox on the top side mm -hmm. in the 1v1. It is double summoners to none for revenge. Is this the eight minute? It'd be after eight minutes, but no. Still no swap here that we've kind of been hearing the pro players talk about on the LCS side. It's going back. No, oh, no, they are actually. They went towards bot. Now they're going to hover mid. Knowing Demonte, Lorlo, as you're saying, just got that advantage. Why not fight for the Herald with that boost? Herald is ready, and JJ is in position. Look oh dear. Boop. Just a sidestep. Nice job, Mike Katie. Oh, is he going to take it? They want the fight. He has to look for, look for himself with Dark Passage when they get there. Very nicely done by Ole to scout with the Lantern, find the hook, knowing he can provide enough time for the rest of the team to get there. Yeah, that's hook for a hook right there. You miss one, then you're going to take one there. Ole punishes him. So JJ, he, I think it was because he was just out of range of Acadian, but he went out of the brush uh, before, uh, which shows yourself before right. you're about to throw the hook. So that gives your enemy a lot more time to dodge. I believe he did that because he was just out of range. Uh, would have to take a ruler to the screen and look at the replay. Yeah. <laughs> But that is going to be a nice big punish there for Dig. And even though this is not an explosive early game domination, it's more of the slow roll. It's continued advantages here, just uh, stacking up for Dig. That being said, we talked about the scaling here with Orn. Um, they also have good answers for later in the game. Triple on the Lissandra can be a very good form of engage when they've got that plus Blitzcrank and Orn. Um, there's a lot of opportunity for FlyQuest to create some space for the Aphelios to dish out that large damage you know he's capable of. I'm trying to also kind of figure out what I think should have the advantage come mid game, but what then is their initiation? Can they just keep going under turrets? Obviously, Demonte playing from the fog of war, trying to chunk people in assassination, but if you get JJ to grab these people out, it looks good for FlyQuest. Exactly. You had it right on the head with that uh, Fog of War comment. This team wants to spread the map. They've got Lorlo, Aatrox in a power position. So they keep him on side lane. And they're able to take control of the vision game here, moving up control wards for Demontes LeBlanc, who did get the kill on the yeah. top side of the map. More money funneled in there. That threatens your uh, surprise attack, you know, finding somebody from a brush, walking between lanes when they're trying to rotate around and answer the Aatrox uh, split bush that will develop. Uh, what we will see, you have to look a little bit further into the game, you know, once these hour towers start going down, but it will be Aatrox on a side lane, LeBlanc on another side lane, and then you keep the Thresh and Senna in middle, which is very safe. But right now, we got the roam down bottom uh, from said LeBlanc, and because FlyQuest see it on the wards, there you go, Riv, there's your Herald. That feels good for FlyQuest, especially knowing Demonte is getting himself going and playing around triple and mid. You see triple chasing bot, then going back to mid. He can't move as fast as Demonte. You want to have that glacial path up to get to safety. A little hit here. Demonte's pulling some aggro towards mid and gets himself a bit of damage, but he should be able to stay safe. Stopwatches are up for those who have taken them. Yep, good timing here from FlyQuest. They finish up with that Rift Road, head right down to set up for the Dragon. And this is the opportunity they've been waiting for. Uh, there is Orn ultimate available. It's very easy to hit Orn ults through these small corridors leading up to Dragon. So Dig, dig here, grouping up on the Drake, uh, it could actually cost them. I think they would rather delay 
um, or possibly go for a steal and get out. They don't want to have a five on five fight. That's what the Fly Quest comp wants. They would much rather split like we were talking about. Keep the Aatrox on the top side. Oh, Canadian. <laughs> Always got to try at least an ability if you can make the range. They had vision of it. They're not going to go in, though. Top still has quite a bit of way to go. You have another minute and a half before these plates are going to fall, so it feels good that Lower Low is going to be able to get some money in this. Ocean Drake is going to take over the map as we get a bit more brush control, and mid lane will now have quite a few members on it, and it looks like it's going to go down in favor of FlyQuest. Yep, this is exactly what you like to see. Both teams playing for their strength. Dignitas do not fight. The disadvantage five on five, and FlyQuest force it. They get the dragon, they use the Herald on mid, get that turret, and that gets them within the striking distance here, evening up the gold very close now. If they can go get a full reset off with no answer from Dig, they already have Proto Belt here for triple. Uh, really helps out with the engage opportunities for Lissandra. Um, and that combined with the long range slow of Orn ultimate and the Blitzcrank, Honking away, looking to pick somebody off. <laughs> like us, will be pretty happy if they can group up and try and use one of those to pull somebody from Dig. But Dig, they have to stick to their guns as well, Riv. Split map, make sure you get those isolated uh, matchups. As much as you want to bring it in for a fight, it's always tempting to fight. The strategy of splitting is better for Dig. We'll see if they keep that in mind as they check their boxes. Go forward. Ooh, good dodge by Phoenix as he gets himself to safety. Ole is right there behind his marksman. Markswoman, rather, to get her out alive. Looks like they're just going to take topside control now. Three and a half until we actually start getting to what will be our soul drakes. We've got to pick up two more on each team, but it's going to be ocean for this game. As we have some uh, items going into the inventories. Man Immune's being finished up there for Phoenix, as well as the Essence Reaver for MASH. So next step for me, for FlyQuest, uh, since they've been able to take down this mid turret, is try and push out this mid wave. Then you get into the jungle to try and take away some of the opportunity from Dignitas. You push mid win, you get your wards on both sides, and that allows you to take away a lot of the possible playmaking and then set up opportunities for Blitzcrank to find pulls. Blitzcrank is one of those champions that benefits so much from heavy control ward usage uh, to try and open up spots and get those pulls. As we saw before, if Phoenix sees you, Senna is very good at dodging. Uh, there you go, there's another attempt. Um, but if you're able to fire off from these control ward spots like we just saw, much higher chance of actually finding one and finding those flanks that you need from your Lissandra. I love the way that Ole is playing here. Only stepping up if he finds a soul on the ground that he needs. Yeah, you want some armor, you want some more stats, but leaving the lantern for Phoenix in any scary situation. Obviously, Demonte can save himself. That buddy system of Phoenix and Ole seems to be moving together, hip and hip. Katie, and just behind them. Oh, the ward clear. Is that all it takes? You wait so patiently, and the ward fight becomes the reason that somebody goes down. And here, Dignitas actually feels like they have the upper hand with a few abilities being missed onto Ole as he has the fancy feet in the river. And Dig takes control of an area they had nothing of just a few seconds ago. Meanwhile, it did cost them more low walking up. I think Dig really thought they were getting that pick there, so. Uh, they do not get the push on bottom side. Revenge is able to get that minion wave moved up, and there will be no action here. So good job by Dig actually clearing out a lot of that vision FlyQuest were trying to put down. Moments ago, we saw all the blue wards on this side of the map for uh, FlyQuest. Nice little move there from Dig. They're able to push out and clean some of the vision down. Lower low to back. We'll see what he has for his inventory coming up. A lot of just armor and defense here for revenge. He knows what he has to go against in lane. And that balmy cinder to keep that damage going on to Lorlo. So it's going to be a bit of magic resistance for himself. Looks like he may get the Merc Threads coming in so he can get that tenacity in and a bit of cooldown so he can continue to be Aatrox in lane. On par with what he really wants to be getting at 16 minutes in. One assist to his name. Things have slowed down though as FlyQuest slowly waiting for their picks. They're not giving Dignitas the assassination attempts Demonte wants. Either. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're waiting for the tree dragon here. Ocean Drake about to show <laughs> up so they can plant some trees. And they want to plant more than just the ocean dragon because if they can uh, group up for the five on five here, ooh, another hook does miss. But this is the opportunity. 
Acadian's pretty squish. If you were to get hit by Revenge, they are Revenge able to take quite a bit. They don't want to use too many abilities on him immediately. And Demonte just has the tunnel vision onto Revenge. Revenge is still alive, quite healthy as well. And now FlyQuest have control over the river as they slowly push Dig out, but still want something out of this fight. A little bit of a route there for JJ, but they do grab control over the bot, and they'll have Fnatic take that dragon alone. Exactly what we were talking about, Riv. The Lissandra is so good at following up and countering LeBlanc. He's able to get the W root immediately, point click, layer all the CCs. Yep. FlyQuest, the Ocean Dragon brings them exactly their win condition. They group as five, they find the kill, <laughs> they get the second dragon for themselves. Oh, and now that they can just continue to stack up these neutral uh, objectives, and because they have not given up side lane towers, the state is in a much better game state for FlyQuest than it is for Datatox. You can see, once again, they don't all hesitate. Everybody flashing in there because they know as soon as we land that CC, yeah. we just burst down the Blanc, that's our victory path. Um, even though I know that Dignitas has been crushed in the lead, they got all these LCS players, I honestly like the composition from this state and set up for Flacklist more. I think they've got the advantage. Dignitas will take the Rift Herald afterwards, but Lorlo's on the run. Glacial Path in. Looking for that Frost Ring on her W. Not close enough to Lorlo, though. World Ender is down, though. That feels good. Can't come and do a teleport fight with that up. Another four minutes until we get our next Ocean Drake here. And you're right, it feels good to see FlyQuest on the win condition of the Ocean Drake as they love planting more trees themselves. It's gonna keep everybody nice and tanky, especially Revenge. This is gonna be an unkillable horn once they get to Soul if they do it quickly. So DeMonte now stays back on the side lanes. He's gonna go take down top, get a little more global gold for the team, and they need to start being able to push their wards forward because right now they don't have too much fog of war to work with. It's only on their side of the map. Exactly. With the outer towers now starting to go down, Dignitas can get some more room to work with. Uh, next one should be this bottom tower uh, on the outer side there for them to try and take down. If they can utilize the whole map, that's where their strengths uh, actually lie. And they won't have to go into these FlyQuest 5-on-5 five five setups where they're front line. So tanky! Oh, still knocked him out up. of the grip. Oh, no, JJ. There could be the follow-up damage, though. The play coming from both sides. Triples over there to make sure the door is closed in the exit path. DeMonte looking. It's still revenge, though. He's, you can see how quick he just wants to take 10%, 20% off of somebody, but he knows revenge won't even take that at this point. So back to the bot. Revenge will protect the turret. Mm -hmm. Lorlo has just been having the solo lane duty all game long. He wants to participate in this one, but... He is doing so this way. Definitely a big objective. We just talked about this was the next one Dig has to go for. Even though they lost out with Ole in mid getting picked, Warlow's eyeing the rest of that one. He's very happy to open up this map. Now Dig have two side lanes without outer turrets to try and work with, so they have much more room to actually move up. I mean, Demonte's already in the Raptor game. He's already looking for someone to kill past that middle point. They are hungry. It's like when you're a LeBlanc and you don't get to do magical things, who's, <laughs> who's going to come to the show? You want to be crazy. You want to be in your opponent's face. Nice hit Rift Herald instant hit for the mid lane turret. Should have a good follow up for the team as they're able to just distort over the wall Surprise! and walk up. That was nice. Yep. Making sure there's no chance for a push up and second tiny or second hit with low health. Still does quite a bit, 60% of the turret. Now they move out. Infernum in the hands of Mash. He should be able to push any waves out that are coming in. They can get themselves up here. And Dignitas will once again thwart the wardage going on over here at Baron. And this is where it gets fun, Riv. I'm excited. The map starts Let's to open go. up. With these full outer ring of turrets down, there's so much more opportunity for you to make a name for yourself with a big pick. JJ, if he gets the Blitzcrank hooks, yeah. if they're able to find somebody uh, with Lissandra locked down there yeah. for triple. I like the edge of that vibe from Phoenix there. Same token though, Demonte's looking for it. Rot row. Those cooldowns are quick. Those cooldowns are quick. Blue buff is on triple though. I think Demonte has to recognize that. He has the ignite off of Demonte now. And they realize he's gone full blast, so see what triple comes back onto the map. I think it's gonna be kind of a breather for FlyQuest as they don't have their mid laner for a moment. All right, you got 50 seconds to breathe, Riv, because Ocean Dragon number two is on the way.
See if they can group up in time. There's no teleport for triple, so he's got to walk straight from base all the way over here to Dragon. Currently, Vision is in FlyQuest's favor as well, so Dig need to get in there and try and uh, clear some of it out. They use the Squire's Bloom. Ole's trying to get the work done quickly. They can leave that ward alone and just walk past it for the fight if they want as they head back towards mid. Setting up slowly. Everybody on FlyQuest feeling confident this game. You look at the scores, 1-0-2 for three members. A little oddly satisfying there. They're just ready to be in these fights. And just as much as Dignitas wants them, it's just harder for Dignitas to find where Demonte can get in. What hook does Ole want? There are wrong targets in this fight. And JJ's able to just throw the hooks out willy-nilly as they kite back again and prepare for another one. Yeah, you gotta be a little bit worried though with the cooldown of your hook not Ooh. available. Horn Horn on to one. That's gonna be Lorlo going up. Watching Demonte on the top right as Hit well. Man. Hit on to JJ. First stop watch. There are a lot on FlyQuest. They have been purchasing them, re purchasing them recently. So expect more of that and Demonte to be foiled in his attempts to get a big burst of front end damage down. Down to about 2,000 health. Smite on both junglers. It is gonna be a level 11 to level 10. And we're gonna see it go down in favor of Dignitas on this one. They're gonna start following up with a few kills if they can find a member of FlyQuest. And what a hit there from Acadian to get one of the Ocean Drakes in their favor. We're two for two now in Drakes. Ooh, Dig were able to stay out of reach. Oh, Lantern, Dark Passage. But can Revenge get to the light? Can he see the light? I think he sees the wrong light on this one. It's not at the end of the tunnel, it's up in the sky. And Revenge goes down for the second time in the game. Dig did a very good job of staying out of range of these Blitz Crank hooks. Every Blitz hook misses here for FlyQuest and they also use the ultimate. This Ooh. one though, he gets the hook at the time where they go for the dragon. Uh, so he's able to actually start out, but Triple has to flash backwards afterwards and Acadian got that smite steal. Um, so in the end, does get that one, but it was at the same time that they go for the uh, dragon take actually. Yeah, it was a bit chaos. We're gonna choose one time to do it. Just cause it's up doesn't mean that should be the next time. So with the Orn, Ultimate being used very early, FlyQuest also didn't have the power to chase through and force the rest of that fight. And that's gonna give you a lot more time. Now that there's no threat of the Dragon Soul coming up on next Dragon, Dig are gonna be way happier about the game because there's no outer turrets left, so they can actually go right back to the split push plan. And they don't have to worry about uh, FlyQuest forcing on Soul Dragon. Merc treads abound here for the side of Dignitas' top keeping out of that crowd control. There are the stopwatches still on the side. Revenge, as well as Fnatic, has one. Uh, possibilities for others, as we saw JJ use his to stay alive there, but everything that they can do to stop Demonte from killing them. And as we mentioned, Phoenix now with that cloak so he can keep himself nice and blocked off like a Banshee's Veil. Oh. Banshee's Veil is key. Banshee's Veil <laughs> That's is why you can't just immediately lock him down. Makes the boss uh, life a lot easier. Take a look at this though. Whoa! Oh! Popping into this one. Oh my god, the four-man Ornhorn. It's going to just be fresh in the middle. Ole was trying to get to the back line, but his back line was getting held up by Revenge. Beautifully done there. They are going to lose Fnatic on this one though. Lorla coming out of nowhere. Demonte still has a chance to dip in and out of this one and deliver some damage, but another kill comes in for Acadian and wiped out of nowhere. It seems like Abs are kind of assessing that they used so much on Ole. Dignitas had free reign of the fight once it opened up. Yeah, and that means Baron Riv because oh, they man. collected every last member of FlyQuest, sent them to the death chamber here for Dig. Another good job of avoiding uh, the big combo there, and they're able to kite it out, then chase down for the extra kills. So many members at low health, but Big wins here. Lorlo leading the charge there on the Aatrox, chasing everybody down at the end. And that is gonna be a big reward. Cause you know what the best tool for a split push team is, Rip? Fair buff for the sides. They can crack the rest of these secondary turrets. Here's how it starts out. Ole jumps in, flashes forward because he's got the stopwatch. He brought the aftershock then when that falls off, goes for the stopwatch to buy more time. Even though Orn goes through three people, the damage isn't next to the CC. That's the big key that we keep talking about for initiation to the LCS as well. Your initiation, your crowd control has to be on opponents that are by your CC. And as you can see, Mash down there, the Aphelios, 
was on the other side of Thresh. Ole had sectioned yeah. him off. So it's a very good job of Ole running points on that. Even though it looks like a one-way suicide mission, he takes the one main DPS source away, uh, you know, from the CC and doesn't allow Mash to get that big Avelios uh, combo ultimate down while people are stunned up by Orn. That means there is no bite uh, to the team fight there for FlyQuest and allows Dig to take over afterwards. That is. That is a very high-value stopwatch, Riv. <laughs> Absolutely. And I actually love this buy of Redemption on Ole. I, I love Thresh. I hardly ever rush a Redemption on Thresh. You're rushing armor, magic resist, something else. But knowing this fight is going to take place in one spot with a Lissandra, with a Felios wanted to be there, in one spot you're going to be able to heal your team. And that's exactly what he did in the previous fight as well. Just synergizing all of their items together so nicely. And now they stand at the door of FlyQuest base. Phoenix loses one part. Ooh, beautiful dark passage over to safety. And they're going to get a quick fight with JJ and Demonte in the jungle. Glorlo still holding the ultimate on that as they lose. Phoenix on the bot side, a bit too spread. And there goes Ole. You thought it looked safe, but FlyQuest will not stop chasing. Two quick picks here for FlyQuest. That is necessary for them to get right back into this. That puts a stop to the Baron push here. Yeah. Dignitas will only get one secondary turret during their Baron power play. Really good answer there for FlyQuest to try and take advantage. Oh, no way. You get a Kadian as well on the way out of this one. There's where the question mark can come out. You know where the opposing That's team dragon. is coming from. How are you still getting grabbed on the way out? Don't be that person. But it happens. Alas, it happens. And now, like you said, Kobe, it's going to be Soul Point as another Drake is picked up by FlyQuest here as they push Dignitas off the front of their inhibitor turrets. Tree Soul coming up here, Riv. <laughs> another Ocean Drake for Dig. And they knew, or for uh, FlyQuest, and FlyQuest knew that they had to take their opportunity now while Dig were split up. What a TP. What a TP indeed. Triple gets the flank on Lissandra. The big moment. That's why JJ on the top side, it looked like he was pulling another one of those crazy support suicide missions. But this time around, it's JJ who had to stopwatch. And he is able to take the attention of Demonte uh, and the other member of Dig there on the top side, keep the members of Dig split, and allowing Triple to get that really big flank on the backside, pick up the kills for FlyQuest, and set them up for Soul Point. And FlyQuest now able to use a triple sweeper around the map to make sure Dignitas has zero vision. Demonte has to come through the front door or be scared about finding his way through the jungle in the dark. 30 minutes have just hit that clock, and we have four for that sole point. Can Dignitas stall it a little bit more? Is FlyQuest going to have a very, very healthy and always healthy revenge? They're starting to level up those items. Molten Edge for Mash as he gets his Infinity Edge locked up. The Luden's Echo upgrade as well. And he already has a few items for himself. It's, they're, they're so big. And now with this fog, they're looking to set up the fight. Going down towards Phoenix once again. You are going to have Edge of Night there protecting him. And they get back to safety. All right, window for Dig now. Orn Ultimate's not there. Flash play. It's time to play. Ole says he's in first. The Great Shield coming in from the center and the heels. And it is going to be a team of FlyQuest going down first on this one. Forward goes the team. Is that going to be followed up by Acadian? It looks like they're going to hold off for now as they start to just control the mid lane. Minute and a half on the Baron. This is Vision set up. And maybe push mid. Top lane's got that push. Do they go back to the split or do they go full force? Full force ahead, Riv. Everybody right down mid. Oh right. my god. Those are Inferno turrets. <laughs> Ole literally almost died. Woo. Ah, the one-man defense there with Aphelios turrets set up. Such a freaky back. Yeah, uh, I mean, that puts a stop to uh, Dignitas attempting to push for a turret afterwards during those death timers, because we're still decently early in the game, so the death timers will be up yeah. uh, after those turrets get a big chunk out of Dig. Um, so that's going to put a stop to it. But if we look back at that fight again, it's the same course of action. When Orn ult is used and FlyQuest don't get the engage, that is the opportunity for Dig. They know without that big AOE ultimate, this is their time to team yeah. fight. That's why you have to be very careful with your Orn ultimates and why you need multiple forms of engage. You either have to have Blitzcrank 
out there in front getting for a pull on someone to force the fight and make sure you're going to get value out of your one ultimate, or a big flank from triple on the Lissandra to force them into the fight and make sure you get full value. Otherwise, Dig here, you saw Lorlo. He's level 17, highest level in the entire game down there on Aatrox. He came in afterwards when there's no Orn ultimate. He gets the big flank. He's an actual juggernaut right now with this build. He's got the Death Dance plus Sterix combination here. It is so hard to take down oh that Aatrox. And he just gets multiple resets. Feels so much. Do it! Do it! Oh, okay, it they're just going out of Kadia or Lorlo. Orn Horn's not gonna come out just yet. Demonte's on to revenge to try and stop it. They're gonna 2v1 Orn now and take him out to make sure he cannot help the team. Oh no, Kobe, it looked like such a good setup and then it just gets routed by Dignitas. Game of stopwatches here, Riv. Wow. Lorla Lor has the stopwatch, so he's the top laner that gets caught out first, but Dignitas take down FlyQuest top laner there. Revenge doesn't have one. He gets killed, so they start up Baron. Lorlo teleports back in with full health, and this is going to have to be a miracle steal for FlyQuest. And not even if Elios has the greatest guns, grabbing some Severum for this fight. You're going to have to get up close to be doing that damage and lock somebody down. Lorlo's coming in from the side. Oh, four, man. He wants it. There's a double knockup. There's another double, and he's going to be locked into the fight. There goes Aphelios, and Mask gets mashed. There is Triple going down as well, and Triple kills, Quadra kills. They're not the same person, but we're seeing all of FlyQuest go down in the ace for Dignitas. Yep, and that is going to be Baron at number two. Plus, Riv, it's just in time for Dragon, so the FlyQuest hearts just crack right there. They're so, so sad to see a big loss of the team fight at this timing. It means they don't get the Ocean Soul because third Ocean Drake here can be picked up by Dignitas. They get the Baron, so they can just get Baron empowered resets. Here's another look at it, though. Lorlo slips over the back of the Baron pit and finds the flame. We're just talking about how massive this Aatrox is. He sets them up for Phoenix Senna ultimate there with the knockup from Q, and they just get obliterated. And there's your dragon we were talking about. Now it's three apiece. Maximum Ocean Drakes, though, on the bright side for FlyQuest, still planting trees. You know, it's funny, I was just asking Jat the other day, I was like, what's like the longest you can usually get if people are going hard on six drakes? And they were going hard there. It's about 35 minutes. This is literally the most ocean drakes that you can possibly yeah. get in a game <laughs> as well. Because the third one determines what the next three are going to be. Right. And because FlyQuest were denied getting the soul, five ocean drakes is <laughs> the most you could ever have. Gonna be good. See who rides that wave. Plants lots and lots of trees this game. That's what we're getting out of this. So I feel so like FlyQuest win even if they lose in that sense. It feels good to know you're doing that. Well, for the, the world wins. Initiative. The environment There wins. you go. There you go. It's just how you take that, I guess, uh, as a grain of salt. 15 to 7, though. What a turnaround here. Last time I, I kind of spoke about the oddly satisfying scores of FlyQuest, it was Fnatic, Triple, and Mash all at 1 0 and 2. It was such a methodical paced uh, and well-paced game, and then Dignitas opens up the doors. You were talking about Vision. We saw top turret, bottom turret go down, and mid turret, and now Dignitas continues to push forward, especially if JJ is just missing those hooks, which Dig is ready for. All right, Baron number two. Dig pushing ahead, he gets well, the hook. Maybe they hit the hook and they still go for it. Revenge is gonna be there. This is where he needs to be the tankiest. All Fidardi comes out, the Moonlight Vigil is down for MASH. Orn Horn not going to get put, or pushed back out there. And they are going to just hang on and hopefully this inhibitor turret stays up. I think he went to headbutt it and headbutt of the wall before he headed his horn. He hit his horn. Yeah, that's, a, that's an unfortunate situation. And with the Baron buff, this tower is going down quickly. Two cannon minions are stacked up here so they can just buff them up and wait by. They're just trying to clear wards to make sure nothing comes over the wall as well. They have so many things to think about and multitask in the base. Rip. That turret, I don't even know how it's standing. Yeah, you could blow that one over right now. <laughs> Honestly, I'm more scared of the Velios turret there right next to the real turret. <laughs> it is Inferno. It's not going to crush the Baron minions, though. That's what they're hoping for. View in and out. Acadian is quite low on this. Triple's trying to throw in the ice shards from the left. It's so tough for them right now. Bot lane's pushing in. That huge wave of Dignitas is going to be in the inhibitor turret soon. It's almost a doubled up and will be a triple wave that actually sets up there as they bring up the cavalry and minions. 
And they're not leaving until they get this. Yeah, Sun is so good at taking these inhibitors. Oh, Ole, he goes in, tries to be the Matador for the team, and it looks like they're gonna lose Ole right away. Revenge wants to get to the front. He's got a lot of stuff to headbutt in this instance, and they lose Demonte in the same fight. And now they're pushing Dignitas back down the lane. A lot of minion cleaning work just has to be done by FlyQuest here, but to stay alive after one inhib for what it was looking like seems pretty good for now. Yeah, FlyQuest, they, they got to be counting their blessings going uh, one for two right here, getting yeah. some gold. To your point, yeah, th this inhibitor, it's going to be almost impossible for them to keep it up. But by getting uh, the extra kills and getting the money back, take a look at how uh, they get him low right here, but Triple is able to get self ultimate plus the stopwatch, so he buys a lot of time. In that time, they kill off Ole, and then because Devante commits for the kill, it is a two for one, and the kill goes to mash me. Or, uh, <clears throat> yeah, goes to mash, and, and that is exactly where they want it. The Aphelios here trying to cap out on Autumn. He's almost full build. FlyQuest do have the orange scaling, so they have the orange upgraded items for pretty much everybody right now. And if you disrespect in one of those team fights, yeah. a fed Aphelios with the lockdown that is on FlyQuest can still pull this one back. So Dignitas need to make use of their advantage right now, which is the inhibitor being down. So super minions will constantly pressure on the top side of the map. And that sets you up to get this soul. 45 seconds away, the inhibitor will remain down. The super minions will still be streaming into the FlyQuest base. And you use that extra pressure uh, to try and delay them and find your pick here. As you can see, Dignitas already setting up their vision, leading up to the soul so they can actually claim it. I love this, the glass cannon, Demonte. Maybe he'll get his Zanyas later. He's like, Banshee's Veil is enough. I will take you out with pure power. Misty's built. I miss him a lot. We also have Shirelia's Reverie, not something you see too often on JJ. He wants to go real fast as he gets into Spotted. these fights. <laughs> Bot lane's getting pushed. They know Lorlo and Demonte are down there. A few wards are gonna let him know so. Look at these minions, Riv. Well, yeah, I talked about the super minions in it's the It's worse that they come in from one side because second turret won't hit those minions. Honestly, Dignitas don't even have to rush this, but here we go. Get themselves to safety for now. Dig's actually pretty pretty scattered in this one, but I feel like the fight still favors them with Demonte being able to go wherever he wants. I don't think Fnatic expected that to come over the wall. And Soul's gonna go over to Acadia and Dignitas. And they are gonna start losing members on the side of FlyQuest as Dig has their eyes on the prize. Hooks are coming out still to try and make this one go in their favor, but the kill comes onto Orn anyways. JJ and Mash are running the real wrong way. And it looks like they're gonna have to fight this one out to the death, as it should be. Mash goes down, JJ goes down, and the base is open with Lorlo inside. Yep, teleport right over there. GG, Dig get the ace, they get the soul and they're gonna take the game. They are going to stay undefeated in this spring split. Now moving on to four and zero as Lorlo puts those finishing touches on, but he wants everybody in the photo. They're gonna take a Polaroid as they get in here and set up right in front of the base. I don't even think we're gonna get a spawn here from FlyQuest. What a dominating game from Dignitas once the map started to open up, once they could play their game. Four is zero for Dig Academy here. Smiles all around. Absolutely. Dig on three. One, two, three, Dig. <laughs> Boom. Everybody looking decent in their positions, as it should be. Phoenix kind of settling into his. Mm -hmm. Doing quite well in the fights to stay alive, know that he was a target. I mean, as a mid laner, you're gonna know people are always coming through. So he has a protective sense already as a marksman. Now you just gotta get that auto spacing down. A lot of good flanks <laughs> in there uh, from my boy Lorlo. Yeah. Uh, shout out to the Aatrox there. Good play, Sam. <clears throat> I like the, uh, the draft on the side of FlyQuest though. I know a lot of people after the fact like to attack that. Um, they had really good team fight. They grouped up, got the objectives. In the early stages, you could see where the success would be from it. But Dignitas too strong. I think once Demonte figured out that, oh, 
all Triple was looking for was DeMonte. He he chose his entries into those fights a little bit better. Going after Revenge the first time, he gets instantly knocked down. You're like, okay, I was tunneling. Let's not do that. <laughs> Here's a draft that we didn't initially get to see, and we can kind of see the reason and the method of the madness behind how the picks happen. Aphelios coming up big, and it does look like uh, uh, it helped out quite a bit with the Senna on the other side. Yeah, I mean that, that that's For the big trade. Trade. that's the big trade, right? Yeah. Um, and then FlyQuest kind of build all this CC around Aphelios. So the idea mm -hmm. is you're going to protect him at all costs. He's going to be the DPS source for your team. So you have to be very careful with that DPS source. And we saw in a lot of the fights, and this is why I'm giving props to Dig, uh, and specifically Ole, one of the big ones early on where Ole sections off the Aphelios from the crowd control. Right. If your CC engages on one side and you lock people up, it's not dangerous if the damage isn't there behind it. Uh, and so that was a really good presence of mind. I think that they played a lot of these fights out well, despite the tools uh, that they had. But here, yeah. Yeah. this is one of the big picks for FlyQuest. And we highlighted the Lissandra into LeBlanc. Boom! Two immediate kills for FlyQuest. Uh, they're able to start getting some of the early dragons. This one is a little bit later into the game, though. And this is where the Ornn ultimate was already down. So without the Ornn ultimate, they do get a Blitzcrank pull here, but Acadian stuck into the pit. Big play from him to get that dragon and relieve some of the pressure on Dig. And then here's the Ole play I'm talking about. He goes right at the Aphelios, uh -huh. knowing that he has Aftershock and Zonyas. So there's the, the CC, and even though Ole sacrifices his life, big support sacrifice there, it allows the team to wade through the big CC ultimates, and then Boom, they can flash in, they can chase him down. Phoenix on the backside with the Senna and Acadian. Woo, getting a little low there at the end, but they finished it off. And it was a big clean sweep there for Dig. After that, they stacked up a bunch of the Barons and they're able to get this. This was scary because they had Baron, you're like, okay, they're gonna split. And then they all come down to bot. Yeah, and you see on the bottom of your screen, triple with the amazing flank to get FlyQuest back in it. But top side, JJ actually took on both solo laners. And that's why I was giving props to the supports in this game. Heck yeah. JJ took the attention of LeBlanc and Aatrox, and he flashes over the wall, running away. Just these Lorlo players are talking about, too. Yeah, that, that was number two around the bear, and he's able to get the big knock up to set up the team for a clean five kills for themselves and the Baron. A lot of rock and roll fights. Once they started, they ended. The teams weren't really tempered in how hard they would go. Uh-huh. And this one. This is the last one, Riv, right before the Soul Dragon. FlyQuest, though, they gotta go all in. They gotta send everything at it. Orn Ol comes through, does get the knockup, but it's not enough. Dragon secured, Soul secured, and Fight secured because they've got Guardian Angel on Acadian. He was the first one to go down. He gets right back up. Guardian Angel on Lorlo as well. It's just too much money at this point. Uh, they are basically able to use their gold lead to buy two extra lives yeah. for that fight with the double Guardian Angel frontline, it's just too little too late at that point. Not that they were huge, but I think a few of those initiations, we saw one with the Blitzcrank and then one in the mid with Orn that actually turned on to uh, FlyQuest pretty hard, was they weren't okay with the position they were in. The first one was at red when Blitzcrank stepped out of the brush to hook and gave gave Akadian the idea that he was there. You said, maybe he was there. we got to take a ruler to it. The next one was in mid, where I was like, oh my god, they're going to do it! They're going to... And then... They walked out of the brush and then threw Ornhorn, instant dark passage out of the way. You can't lead that much into what you're going to do. You telegraph the play, the team's going to read it and come right back at you. And it seemed like that happened a few times when FlyQuest had just gotten all their vision, just gotten map control over Dignitas's play in the fog of war. So we see Dig again, able to come out very strong. That's unique pick number four for DeMonte. Not, so I'm just trying to see who like has really put themselves out in the champion pools here. That's third for... Aatrox and Lorlo. He did get a set in. We know that was He's pretty big good. Aatrox fan. He's big, big Aatrox fan. He's also a big fan. Fiora fan, so I want to see that on stage. We'll see it. There's a, <laughs> a big season to go, or a long season to go, I should say. We are stepping away, but when we return, it's Golden Guardians Academy versus Evil Geniuses Academy. Don't go anywhere.